In this week's episode, we go over the first three state questions that are going to be on the November 8th ballot. This is part one of a two-part episode. On the ballot this November 8th will be seven state questions for you to consider. These state questions are important enough that I wanted to dedicate a few episodes to them. Now, besides the presidential election, which takes up most of the news, and all of the state and local races down the ballot, the state questions are one of the most important things you need to consider. These questions can directly affect lives here in Oklahoma. There are a few ways a question can be put on a ballot. One is by legislative referendum, meaning the Oklahoma State Legislature voted to put a question to the vote of the people. Another way is by initiative petition, wherein a group of citizens gather enough valid signatures to have a question put on the ballot. All of these questions are filed with the Oklahoma Secretary of State. When a question qualifies to be on the ballot, the Secretary of State notifies the State Election Board of the state question number, the ballot title, meaning the text that will be on the ballot, and the date of the election. If you visit the Oklahoma Secretary of State's website, you can see a list of all of the questions that could potentially be on future ballots. I encourage you to go look it up. Now, 2016's ballot is already in place. In this episode, I'll be going over state questions 776, 777, and 779. In part two, next week, I'll go over 780, 781, 790, and 792. First, I'm going to read the text as it will appear on the ballot. Then, if needed, I'll attempt <laughs> to give you an English translation of what I just read. Some of the information I'll be sharing to you comes from a few different sources. I'll have a link to each source in the show notes. The two primary sources are the Oklahoma State Elections Board at ok.gov elections and the 2016 Oklahoma Voter Guide at okvoterguide.com. The 2016 Oklahoma Voter Guide was compiled by a nonpartisan coalition of Oklahoma news media and nonprofit organizations. I highly recommend you check it out. You can download a PDF of it at okvoterguide.com. While I'm going over these state questions with you, I'm going to be leaving out my personal opinion. Right now, it's more important for you to know what the questions are than what I think about them. I honestly want you to make up your own mind on how you're going to be voting yes or no. Now, that said, <laughs> I have my own opinion, and at the end of the next episode, in part two, I will share with you my thoughts on each question and how I will be voting. All right, let's get started. Ballot title for state question number 776. This measure adds a new section to the Oklahoma Constitution, section 9A of article 2. The new section deals with the death penalty. This section establishes state and constitutional mandates relating to the death penalty and methods of execution. Under these constitutional requirements, the legislature is expressly empowered to designate any method of execution not prohibited by the United States Constitution. Death sentences shall not be reduced because a method of execution is ruled to be invalid. When an execution method is declared invalid, the death penalty imposed shall remain in force until it can be carried out using any valid execution method, and the imposition of a death penalty under Oklahoma law, as distinguished from a method of execution, shall not be deemed to be or construed the infliction of cruel or unusual punishment under Oklahoma's Constitution, nor to contravene any provision in the Oklahoma Constitution. All right, uh, that was a difficult question to get through. It deals with a very serious subject and shouldn't be taken lightly. So please think this one over before voting on it. It deals with the death penalty in Oklahoma. 
If voted on, it would allow the state legislature to come up with different execution methods, and if that execution method becomes invalid, the death penalty will still be imposed on the person it's sentenced to. This is literally a life and death state question, so please think this one over. Ballot title for state question number 777. This measure adds section 38 to article 2 of the Oklahoma Constitution. The new section creates state constitutional rights. It creates the following guaranteed rights to engage in farming and ranching. The right to make use of agricultural technology. The right to make use of livestock procedures. And the right to make use of ranching practices. These constitutional rights receive extra protection under this measure that not all constitutional rights receive. This extra protection is a limit on lawmakers' ability to interfere with the exercise of these rights. Under this protection, no law can interfere with these rights, unless the law is justified by a compelling state interest, a clearly identified state interest in the highest order. Additionally, the law must be necessary to serve that compelling state interest. The measure and the protections identified above do not apply and do not impact state laws related to trespass, intimate domain, dominance of mineral interest, easements, right-of-way or other property rights, and any state statutes and political subdivision ordinances enacted before December 31st, 2014. All right, you know the term right to farm has been thrown around, and I think that is really misleading. That's not what this is. You can farm right now if you want to. Um, If this state question is passed, it will prevent state lawmakers from passing legislation to regulate agriculture unless there is a compelling state interest, whatever that means. This is all rather vague, and you should read up on this one. Ballot title for state question number 779. This measure adds a new article to the Oklahoma Constitution. The article creates a limited purpose fund to increase funding for public education. It increases state sales and use taxes by one cent per dollar to provide revenue for the fund. The revenue to be used for public education shall be allocated 69.50% for common school districts, 19.25% for the institutions under the authority of the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education, 3.25% for the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education, and 8% for the State Department of Education. It requires teacher salary increases funded by this measure raise teacher salaries by at least $5,000 over the salaries paid in the year prior to the adoption of this measure. It requires an annual audit of school districts' use of the monies. It prohibits school districts' use of these funds for the increasing of superintendents' salaries or adding superintendent positions. It requires that monies from the fund not supplant or replace other educational funding. If the Oklahoma Board of Equalization determines funding has been replaced, the legislature may not make any appropriations until the amount of replaced funding is returned to the fund. The article takes effect on July 1st after its passage. Well, this state question is actually really straightforward. I like those. Um, If this one's passed, it adds a one-cent sales tax to fund a raise for Oklahoma teachers. That's what this is for, is to give Oklahoma teachers a much-needed raise for one cent on the dollar. So let's see how this one works out. Well, that was the first three state questions, and I'll go over the others next week. Remember, you can read all about these state questions in the 2016 Oklahoma Voter Guide at okvoterguide.com. Uh, They give a really nice summary about each of these, and they also give some pros and cons about each. I'll have a link to it in the show notes. Uh, Please go check it out. This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is to write up your thoughts about this year's state questions. Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for WebRing membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the web ring and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. 
Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. An important date is getting closer every day, and that's October 14th. That's the last day you could register to vote for the November 8th general election here in Oklahoma. For details, please visit ok.gov slash elections. Please, if you haven't done so, go register to vote. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? There you can purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please head on over to cafepress.com slash Blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist. There is now well over 13 hours of music for you to enjoy. You can listen to this playlist on Spotify and YouTube. I'll have links to them and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. I'm happy to announce as of October 2nd, 2016, Blog Oklahoma has 909 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. Remember, the last day you could register to vote here in Oklahoma is October 14th, so please register to vote. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time. <laughs>